Hello and welcome to the Arma 3 E3 2012 presentation proper. Uh, I'm Jay Crow and with the help of my beautiful assistant Ivan Buchter, we're going to hopefully <laughs> take a quick run through the game. Uh, and starting off, we're going to have a tour around Camp Maxwell. Um, maybe if Ivan heads down to the shooting range, we can see the weapon handling, the improved animations, different stances, uh, and get a feel of how the game really handles. This is a little bit different to our uh, last year's presentation, which was a bit more behind closed doors. We're really trying to create some playable content now, getting people hands-on with, with Armour 3, and that really fits in with our uh, goal to create a community uh, preview. What does that mean? Uh, well, it means optimization, uh, testing out the, the game on different people's hardware and trying to find, uh, identify any problems and make Armour 3 the smoothest release that we've ever had. You can see the lean to the right there. A little bit to the left. This is one of my favorite stances, going up and down. It's just, it's just a tiny little improvement, but when you're in a firefight, you can find some cover behind the wall, pop up and down and stay out of the line of fire. You can also go prone, and uh, we've got a bit of a last sound animation as well. There we go. Again, our goal is to make things a little bit more fluid, a little bit less clunky. I mean. When we'll never be the Call of Duties of this world. We have a real body here. We're connected to the skeleton. So for us, it's about trying to make things as fluid as we can and also trying to find ways to create appropriate controls so people can really feel like they're in control of their weapon. Nice little custom reload animations here. And really, we're going for quality over quantity here. Although we've got the classic enormous range of Armour 3, we've got nice weapons, great sounds, great animations, all working together to make, hopefully, the most polished Armour 3 that we can. So, we've had a quick overview here. Uh, maybe we can jump into one of the showcases and uh, get to see some of our features a little, more, a little more close up. Well, let's kick things off with diving. It's one of our most uh, uh, striking new features, I guess. And it's also one of my favorite things because it involves the entire team. If we're talking about environment designers making this beautiful underwater environment, uh, animators to make the scuba diver swim, uh, mission designers trying to make some gameplay with it all, uh, sounds, I mean, it's really the entire team and we can all be proud of sort of creating this whole new environment. Uh, it, I think it's a logical extension of what Armour is all about. It's another aspect of freedom. You know, you can get into a helicopter, fly to our objective, or here we can get into our submarine and take, take a circuitous route around. So this is a special underwater rifle. It's not like we can take a, an M16 under the water and start laying down some fire. Uh, special ammunition, special weapons, and the sounds there, actually they aren't custom. We have special filters, so all of the sounds underwater are a little bit more muffled. And again, lots of different things, nice periscope, lots of different things working together to create a convincing new dimension to Armour 3. So we'll go forward here, maybe find a little rock formation, try and avoid a few fish and we can see the render the texture technology. It's a fancy word for picture in picture, so we can navigate using it without having to uh, travel by third person. Little details like the underwater rendering, the little seaweed, the seabed, it all works together and as I say, we're proud, although we're still at Alpha, of where we are now. Up ahead, we've got some enemy scuba divers. So, programmers have had to work hard here as well, making sure the AI can navigate underwater. It's all part of our improvements to AI um, and our commitment to try and make Armour 3 as stable as we can. Again, this relates to our uh, community preview. We want to get this kind of content out so people can play with it and we can try and identify any fixes we need. So, come 2013, we can release uh, the best game that we possibly can. The guns have a range of something like 30 to 50 meters. I mean, obviously this is a, a simple case of configuration, but we want to have a good balance between something that's authentic and something that offers some interesting gameplay for the players. In this scenario, we were supposed to take out a couple of divers, go up to our underwater mines, de deactivate them, uh, maybe clear the way for a beachhead assault the next day. 
got a great wreck here with the underwater caustic effect and yeah, everything's really working well together and as I say, really proud of the team and the work they put in. That's a helicopter that we can hear overhead. They're going to drop off a couple of enemy divers, so watch out, Ivan. And again, that muffled sound creating this feeling about being underwater. Uh, yeah, it's a whole new game in itself, just this small game mode, I think. So, underwater gave us some idea of the improvements, the lighting, the underwater rendering. Uh, nighttime is another great place to be able to see that in effect. Uh, dynamic lights from vehicles or weapon mounted lights, particularly. Up ahead of us, we've got some chem lights, and we'll follow this trail to find our uh, friendly patrol, maybe engage in some uh, nighttime operations. Show the muzzle flash. We can see the Ivan's turned on the flashlight there, which helps illuminate the environment. And we've also plugged in yeah, new muzzle flashes, which really light up the night scene. Wonderful timing. For the player, uh, this isn't just a nice fancy visual effect. If we're fighting against the AI and he has um, uh, no muzzle suppressor on, we're going to be able to see him firing from a distance. Uh, equally, if he has a muzzle suppressor, a flash suppressor on rather, sorry, uh, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to spot. We can see about changing gear here. So here we've just equipped a laser pointer, an IR pointer rather, sorry. And here we can mark targets, and when we get up to our friendly patrol, they'll switch on their lasers when they see some enemies. Help us find uh, where to shoot. The customizable gear interface in itself is a big feature. Uh, it relates to our fatigue system. <laughs> Ivan there is proud of his NVGs, um, which now I animate between states on and off. Uh, talking about the gear once more, uh, if we have a big backpack full of equipment, that's going to that's gonna, uh, hold us down, it's going to fatigue us. Here we've got the capacity, and the more that we hold, the faster we'll become fatigued, and that has real effects in gameplay. It means we're going to be able to sprint for a shorter amount of time, but our accuracy is going to be a little less, or our recovery to become accurate is going to be a little longer. So again, there's lots of things that are working together, and that's why it'll be important to get out a public build, so we make sure everything is smoothed out, uh, iterated on, tweaked, polished. This is our friendly patrol just up ahead beside the cam light, with a nice helicopter in the background. This showcase is great because it, uh, it gives you a hint about the physics, it gives you a hint about the ragdoll, shows a lot of the new advancements to the interior of vehicles, again, adding a little more polish, making the game feel uh, like it has a few less rough edges. The sounds, which maybe we can't hear quite so well uh, here at the Loud E3, these have all been improved as well, and our sound designers are doing a really great job in uh, making the vehicles as good as they can. The handling itself is based on physics, as we mentioned. We're upgrading it from Physics 2 to Physics 3 at the moment. That's partly why our Community Alpha has been a little bit pushed back. Now we're looking at something more like uh, August time when we'll have a more of an announcement about the details about how to access that, when to access it, as we uh, help, as we try to configure these vehicles and make sure that Physics works in multiplayer as well. We don't want to roll out a, a Community Alpha without these really important features in and able to test. Okay, we've got some enemies rolling up uh, so we'll pick a perfect firing position, switch into optics. Maybe we can switch into thermal imaging mode. Now, we added thermal imaging in uh, Operation Arrowhead. I think a lot of guys maybe... A lot of guys maybe would have uh, stopped playing at Armour 2, and this, is, this will be a brand new feature for them. Uh, things... Uh, where can we find them? Oh, we got some guys behind the trees. Uh, things that have heat in the, in the world are displayed as white. And things like the muzzle of a weapon, uh, as it's firing, it'll heat up and that becomes more white and visible. If we can hit some grenades on these soldiers, we'll see some uh, of the ragdoll in action. But unfortunately, they seem to be taking more effective cover than I'd like them to. I know a lot of the uh, 
GameSpot readers are interested in improvements to AI. As you can see, Ivan's having a bit of a job uh, attacking him at the moment. But to talk about specifics, uh, if we look at things like the Ar Operation Arrowhead beta patch testing pipeline, which is a bit of a mouthful, we've seen a lot of really nice improvements uh, which now can be merged into Armour 3. And again, with the help of the community and the commitment of our uh, skill programmers, try and really help take this complex game and make it as solid as possible. Perhaps it's worth mentioning that this is Stratus. This is one of our two maps. It's a little smaller, although I guess size is relative. Uh, it's eight by eight kilometers, and obviously a lot of new nicely detailed seabed as well. Uh, the firm ground of Limnos, the bigger of the island, is uh, uh, 60 times more than we will see here. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's difficult to sort of visualize what 300 square kilometers is, but if you can see a lot of room here, 60 times more is obviously quite a lot. We've got the lovely detailed pilot models, detailed cockpits. Obviously, we've got a lot of experience now making helicopters from the, the recently released take on helicopters. Uh, we're bringing a lot of that experience, a lot of the nice touches like the render the texture mirror just to the left there. Uh, and again, little touches trying to make the game as polished as we possibly can. Nice particle effect, nice particle effect on the water there. I don't think I should try to speak at the same time as a cannon. And we can switch to rockets and take a look at them firing as well, I think. So again, trying to make the audio a little more meaty, but not compromising on the quality. Ivan's not much of a pilot, so I'm glad that you haven't crashed. Uh, but I think this gives us a good view of the scale of the terrain, and again, reinforce this idea of armor being about freedom. Uh, freedom to travel around the map, to jump into a helicopter, jump underwater, really fight the battle however it is that you like to. So, classic clean sweep operation. We're going down into this uh, small village on the island. Uh, again, worth mentioning, this is Stratus. It doesn't have a huge buildup of uh, populated settlements as compared to Limnos, Murina, lot, a lot larger towns there, and of course, uh, the kind of CQB engagement that that entails. Well, I think that we can just sort of let the game speak for itself at the moment. Um, it's, uh, it's very smooth to play and um, the, the lighting on its own makes it feel like an, a completely new game, aside from the features. Got even putting stances to good use there. And we'll have some enemies at 11 o'clock, I think. I talk about the iterative, iterative development of the AI. It's not about making one huge revolutionary step, rather it's about saying, you know, what are the problems at the moment? How can we try and help fix them? A good example is the PMC DLC released last year. It was uh, a couple of missions based in Zargabad. Now that's a big uh, urban terrain, and we were finding the AI were moving through really excruciatingly slowly. So we didn't just accept that, we said, okay, what's going on here? We got Andres Spaniel on the case, and, he's, and he worked out that actually the AI were evaluating almost every object in the scene, trying to find the right place for cover. They were trying to do too much, and it was slowing them down. So what they do now is it's a little more simplified. They'll find the correct cover without trying to find every single small wall to take cover behind. If I'm taking cover behind a wall equally, they'll throw a grenade over the top, as we saw in our uh, E3 preview video. Another, another common complaint people might have is the control systems. Now, obviously we're adding new features here, new, uh, new linear mechanics, so we need to evaluate ways of, of fitting these into the control scheme without overwhelming the player. 
Again, part of that will be the community alpha, making sure that people are able to use the controls or enjoy using them. And another part of that is, is our work internally. Uh, a veteran developer, uh, Carol Maricci, um, he's created this basically snooping on other developers with key logging. So we track how many key presses, uh, the combinations of pressing control and, modify, and modifiers like uh, Alt. And we try and heat map uh, where your hands are, where the best place to put keys will be. And this all fits into trying to make it a more streamlined experience. Now, we don't want to be afraid of the word streamlined. Like, we know that it means, uh, when console developers say it, it means you know, press A to win, go to the next piece of cover. For us, it means how do we take the edges off our game? How do we make it more, <laughs> and again, accessible, that, that word that people are afraid of? Well, I think the community said actually, you know, we don't need to talk about accessibility, just usability. Like, how can we make the game more usable, more obvious for the player? How can we teach them to play the game? Well, part of that is also our playable content. Uh, the start of our campaign was very much going to be focused upon getting the player used to handling a rifle. You're just uh, a simple infantryman um, led by a commanding officer. Go and take out the mortar site, go and take out the town, simple stuff. Okay, well, I think that about wraps up what we've got to show. Hopefully that wasn't too long for you guys. Uh, hopefully there's some interesting information there. Uh, hopefully it raises a lot of questions too. You can contact us on our forums at bistudio.com. All the latest information as well, armor3.com, and our social channels, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Uh, thanks for joining us, and uh, see you next time.